Welcome back. Today we are going to be talking about router templates and why they are honestly the best. Having precise and accurate measurements is sort of important with woodworking, and that's where your router templates come in. A router template is a guide that helps you make precise cuts with your router. I received my order from Crafted Elements earlier in the week, and I cannot wait to give them a try. Out of the box, I can't believe how well made these templates are. I've seen a few that are super thin or made from MDF, but these are a thick acrylic to withstand the wear and tear of frequent use. Once you've selected your template, you'll need to secure it and your workpiece so you can begin routing the design. You can attempt to use clamps. I find that they are always in the way of the router base. You can use double-sided tape. However, if you do not use enough, the template may move around and ruin your straight lines. But with these templates, it easily peels away. You can also use the painter's tape, super glue, and activator method. I went overboard with the tape, but I was excited to try it. The activator is hard to find in stores, at least it is here where I live. Simply stick the tape to the wood and the template. One gets the gel glue, the other gets the activator. Once they are compressed, it's a solid hold. And because painter's tape is designed to be removed, it leaves behind zero adhesive. Let's talk about router bits for a little bit. So there are a ton of different router bits available to you. In order to use these templates, you will need to get some flush cut router bits. So flush cut router bits come in a couple different varieties. To start out, they have different diameters. So this is a half inch diameter. This guy is a fourth inch diameter. You need to know which one fits into your router so that you buy the correct bit to go into your router. They do make what are called collets, which they will take whatever diameter to whatever diameter, depending on the collet that you buy. This one takes my fourth inch into a half inch so that it fits in my bigger routers. The next thing about flush cut bits is they have different ways to remove material. This guy has the two cutters that will spin around. They do make them that kind of look like a drill bit, and these are a lot better for hardwood and your end grain cuts than these big guys. Router bits also have bearings to match your cutter heads. Some bearings are on the bottom and some are on the top. Both have their advantages and disadvantages against each other. If you're using a bearing on the bottom, it's more than likely going to be to remove material inside of a project template like these cutouts. If you're using a bearing on the outside, it could be in the tabletop setting that will guide against the outside to remove all material. And you can also use these guys in a tabletop setting, but then your template is upside down, less safe because you can't actually see your template. When routing, remember to go the correct direction. Counterclockwise around the exterior and clockwise around the interior. This is called a push cut and gives you better control. It also prevents the router from jumping ahead. If you're anything like me and use your palm router way too much, you'll know that it comes with a small base standard in the box, which for most small projects, this isn't a problem because it spans the entire distance. Some, like this guy, it can, because unless you're paying attention to know to keep this on the inside, it can become unstable just from not only the small bridge, but because it can't span the entire cutting area. So I did film a short DIY on how to make this larger router base out of a piece of plexiglass. I generally just clamp it into my woodworking vise and I use it like that. It is possible to use these templates without a dedicated router table. All that you need is a piece of styrofoam or loose material. You will clamp it down to your workbench so it doesn't move around. You will take your piece of wood, you will secure it down to the styrofoam and then you will secure your template on top. So once you router out this project, your depth will go just a bit into the styrofoam, not into your workbench, and it will give you an actual flush cut around the outside. Different wood species of different thicknesses require different speeds, and that's not your cutting speed, it is actually the RPM speed of the bit itself. So some routers allow you to adjust the speed of your bit, this router here does not let me adjust it in any way whatsoever. My palm router does have a speed adjustment and the $100 skill router I just picked up, definitely go watch that review. It has a digital display to adjust the bit, the thickness. If it's a plastic, hardwood, softwood, it all adjusts the RPM for you. So it takes all of the guesswork out of that. 
it is a crazy router for 100 bucks. Another reason could be that you're removing too much material at one time. If you had cut this piece of mahogany and you were attempting to router this thickness out at one time, you're gonna have wood burn because the router bit will not be able to keep up. That is why usually you see people that take their project and will cut out around it with a bandsaw or jigsaw and then go and do the finishing cut with that flush cut bit. I routed this little beauty not only because I had the template for it, but also because the there are three wooden crosses on the right side of the highway. Why there's not four of them, heaven only knows. It was stuck in my head all day. I oh. Overall, router templates are a valuable tool to any woodworker. If you're considering to dabble in router templates, I strongly suggest getting a few like I did today, kind of play around with them. Uh, it, they're fun, they're easy, and it can save you time and effort and give you accurate and consistent cuts when you're trying to make random projects. Also, it's great for scraps, so if you have a piece of scrap wood that's this size, um, smash out a small little tea light holder with it. Uh, make profit, give it to a friend. Not that Crafted Elements sponsored this video in any way whatsoever, but they do make some very nice molds, templates, and tools. Uh, definitely go check their website out. These are just a few that I wanted to purchase. They have a whole bunch for like epoxied handles or the molds for epoxies. I'm not getting into that yet because that's a bigger money pit than what I'm trying to do right now. So, but definitely go check them out. Some of the templates I haven't used yet. So thanks for watching to the end of the video, and I hope we learned something, and I'll catch you in the next one.